Forged in the fires of conflict, the eyeing kingdoms are being ripped apart. But who will save them? <laughs> Welcome to the Friday Fantasy Show from the Bottled Imp, exploring the realms of fantasy. My name is Ken Boyter and today we're going to be taking a look at this little beauty. This is the Black River Irregulars, book one, Black Dogs, and it's written by Richard Lee Byers. And it's published 2016 by Skull Island Expeditions, and they are part of Privateer Press. And they very kindly sent me a copy of this book. Just to make sure though, so you know, I will be honest with this review. Just because I got it sent makes a no difference to me. This is part of the Iron Kingdom's Chronicles. Now there's various other books within this series. And all of this is based on their, apparently, I, I, I don't know about this, but apparently the award-winning Iron Kingdom's game. I'll be intrigued to play that. But for now, let's contend. What, eh? Let's contend ourselves. That isn't even a word. What am, I t what am I trying to say? Content, be content. Let's be content with looking at the book. <laughs> so, just what is the setup for the Black River Irregulars? Book one, Black Dogs. It's pretty simple, actually. The setup is there is a city called Corvus. And there's an undercity, so it's kind of like a city beneath a city. And this city beneath the city, the undercity, well, it's a dangerous place to be because it is run by a gang and they are called the Paint and Weavers. But we open up when the novel starts with them being kind of defeated. They're, they're being attacked, they're being taken over by a rival gang, a syndicate from another city, and they are called the Black Dogs, and they seem vicious. They are out to kill anyone who is part of the original gang that control the Undercity. And that, you might think, yeah, it's a fairly simple story. But there is one added complication. There are people out there that are gonna be fighting back, a resistance, if you like, and they are called the Black River Irregulars, yes. A plucky band of people have decided that they don't want to be ruled by the Black Dogs. It was bad enough being ruled by another gang, but this Black Dogs gang, they seem horrible, like really horrible. So they, try, the first aim is to survive, regroup, form a resistance group, and then start fighting back. It's as simple as that. It's kind of like a gangster setup, turf wars, or like the Wild West. And there are various different themes that run through this novel. There are, there's the theme of um, revenge, where it's out and out revenge. There isn't any kind of leeway. If you have done something to a gang member, then that you deserve to die, basically, or at least be, you know, pretty badly maimed. There is no leeway. Revenge is revenge. It does what it you know, says on the tin. There's also loyalty that runs through this. And in this case, it's not necessarily loyalty between friends. It's loyalty between gang members. Gang is king. It's all about the gang. The individual people within the gang, yeah, they don't really matter as long as you're loyal and as pretty much as long as you do what you are told, you're like a faithful gang member, a soldier, then you'll be fine. But as soon as you betray, as soon as you go against the loyalty of the gang, well, you are pretty much dead. There's, again, there's no leeway. And there's also, there is a, a friendship theme that does run through this, or should I say it's an anti-friendship because of the nature of this undercity, which is a place where low lives are scum, crime, you know, it's, it's a horrible, horrible place to live. But that is the law of the jungle, that there really isn't friendship. Because as soon as you start trusting somebody, then you are leaving yourself open for attack, basically. So you have to develop this way of just have a, a natural instinct not to trust somebody, ever. Even if 
you get to the stage where you know this friendship may begin to occur and you feel like yeah no maybe I could trust this person you know they've proved to me their actions demonstrate that I could be friends with them no as soon as you start thinking that you are a dead person so those got those themes that are running through it and I guess one of the most dominant themes that run through it is the power struggle the domination that need for control and if you think about it, one, you know, in all societies, when you've got a set of humans, well, not just humans, you know, obviously animals as well in the animal kingdom, there's that, that control factor. There needs to be people or a person who is in control. And I don't quite fully understand why that would be, because I kind of think, yeah, if you're, tr if you're craving power, does that make you a horrible person? Not necessarily, because it's what you do with that control, it's what you do with that power. Now, in the case of the Undercity, certainly with the Black Dogs, and I would imagine all of the gangs that are, are kind of there in, in the Undercity, they are just out for themselves. They're not really interested in, in, in health care and, and good schooling and all of that. No, it's just about power, wealth, money, exploitation. It's about controlling the populace. And so it brings open that whole theme of... If you've got a few people at the top, how do they control the masses? How do you control the masses? And so it explores that. And in this case, with the Undercity, there is only one way, and that's fear. That's fear, that's intimidation, and you need to create that fear. And so you need to be brutal, you need to show no mercy. So that is the law of the jungle. The characters in this book, I, I really warm to right from the start, because the, the author very cleverly kind of had it where you're straight away reading about survivors of the attack from the Black Dogs. You're aware that, that, that things are changing, that the power struggle has begun, but you're actually in it from the side of a survivor. So instantly you're kind of going to take the Black River Irregulars side because you kind of want to be that survivor. You don't want to be the one that's going to get killed. You certainly don't really want to be the one that's, you know, going to be doing the killing and the maiming. But you want to be the one that's kind of surviving. But then it develops into one of these situations where you think, well, okay, if, if I'm going to be surviving in this horrible situation, that brings up the question, would I, how would I survive? If I'm being attacked, would I attack back? Would I then start committing murder or, or killing people? For self-defence, and so that it, it, you know, and, and even if you wanted to, could you do it? When it when it really gets down to crunch time, could you actually do that? So I love the fact that you're that these characters, that the the, the uh, resistance group, they're the ones that are surviving. They're the kind of good guys, but in order to do that, they need to kind of cross that line. They need to you know shift from that moral code of I'm an up you know upstanding citizen to actually I'm a bit of a low life as well but then I'm being forced into this. Now the Black uh, River Irregulars they weren't upstanding citizens to begin with so they had a, an easier path to get to that you know way of maiming and killing but they, they somehow seem to be you, you somehow want to root for them you, you sympathize with them more than you do with the Black Dogs and that could be just because you're spending more time with them because the Black Dogs characters, they start to develop a little bit further down the line and it, it, it becomes a sort of cat and mouse, the hunter and the hunted. And I guess, uh, maybe it's just me, but I kind of always go for the underdog. And when you look at Star Wars, you kind of want the rebellions, the, the, the rebels to win, don't you? You don't necessarily want Darth Vader to win, although there might be some people that do. So the characters are very well defined, they're very well written, they, you, you connect emotionally with them, you know, I bonded very quickly with pretty much all of them, and there are other characters in there that are, um, they're human, uh, no, they're not humans, they're, I was going to say humanoids, yeah, they're humanoid, but they're, they're mechs, they're, they're machines, they're technical robots, basically. But again, they've got a bit of personality, so you, you start to like them as well. The fantasy element in this, Yes, this isn't strictly a fantasy book. I would say it's science fantasy, which it has elements of science fiction, maybe predominantly more science fiction than fantasy, but I would probably say it's very, very close, maybe 55% sci-fi and 45% fantasy, because 
In this, there's a beautiful mix of magic and technology. They fuse them together. The magic is never explained, which is great. It doesn't have to be. And it really delves into the, 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 the way the characters use magic. They're, they're, they're warriors who also have magic at their disposal, but they're not kind of out and out magicians. It's almost like it's, if you were to invent magic, if you were to create magic, how would you do it? So you would kind of do it through techni technology, can I say that word? Technology, technological, <laughs> technology way. So it's almost like you, you, you invent magic as a science rather than magic is kind of somehow it's sort of out there in the ether. Really love that. So you've got, you know, they have a magic weapons or magic bullets that, that, that are recharged and, and created. Really love the way that the fancy element dips into this. And it, as I say, it really, it, it's almost like, it reminded me of Firefly, um, although that was less fantasy, but it has that sort of, you know, rebellious streak of characters in there. And the way that they're just kind of going out there, they're like a ragtag bunch that are sort of finding their way and they're creating weapons as they go along. They're using their resources really like that, you know, their initiative to create, you know, the situation, change the situation to their advantage. Really love that. The pacing of the book is brilliant. It's really packed. It's uh, sorry, it's really action packed. It's really fast paced, but there is enough downtime, if you like, for character development. And I feel that is crucial. If I didn't care about the characters, I wouldn't really care about the fighting and, or, you know, and, the, and the destruction that, that actually happens. So, you, so first and foremost, the, the author has actually cared about the characters, developed the characters, put in a good plot, and then you know, put in all the action. It's not the other way around. He hasn't decided, well, let's just write an action you know, book because people like reading about actions and, and you know, and, and things blowing up. No, it's actually character driven. And for me, that is crucial. If it wasn't that way around, I don't think I would have enjoyed it as half as much. The plot, as I say, it's a plot that we've seen before, but it's, it just, for some reason, it feels fresh. It feels new. I really, really enjoyed being part of that underground city. I actually, it was kind of like a, you know, a safe way for you to do bad things, if you like. You're reading about people who aren't nice people on the whole, but even then within, certainly within the Black River Irregulars, they actually do have their own kind of code and, and morals. So they're leaning towards the good guys. But as I say, they would, you know, that they, they do horrible things, but you kind of forgive them. It's an interesting moral dilemma that, that it throws up. So the plot, it, yeah, it reminds me of the old Wild West plots where, you know, you've got a gang of cowboys that come in, they're trying to take over another gang. It has that element to it. But for some reason, it just seemed different to me. And there was also an aspect of a wider situation going on. I love the, the world that was created, this undercity this dangerous place that you really wouldn't want to go you know, in real life, but when you're reading about it in fiction, you really get engrossed by this sort of down and dirty life. Really loved it. And there was an aspect of a bigger picture going on. So I can see why that there would be more books in the series, because you know, it, it's not over, put it that way. It's not over. It does wrap up beautifully, but there's elements that are still open. So overall, I loved it. I write from the beginning that the style of writing, you could tell that the author, he's written loads of books and you, it, it shows he's very well experienced. The style of writing is concise. It moves along brilliantly. That there's no, it's very economical. I know it sounds a really boring way to describe a book, but there's no flab in this. It's just right to the bone. You, you get exactly what you want out of it. It's very well, very satisfying read. I really warm to the characters. And it really did a really good job of capturing the squalor and the kind of dirty, grimy life, um, but made it accessible and, and, and kind of made sense of it. There, there was some sort of, sort of structure. There is, uh, in, the, in the city above, there is the police, or as they're known as the watch. And so society might be functioning in, in the way that we would know, 
But this is a different society, and so the police, they're scared to go down into this place. So there has to be, there still has to be rules though, and it is the rule of the jungle. It's basically who is stronger than who, who can command more fear. And that is always a fascinating, you know, subject matter. If you look at Game of Thrones, that is exactly what that's all about. It's, it's basically who, who's going to be king? Well, it's the one, or queen, it's going to be the one that has the largest army, or, or the, the, you know, or who can you know, be the nastiest in some respects, who just grabs the power. And the same goes for this situation here. So I really did bond with the characters, I really liked them. They each had their individual quirks and, and you know, motivation. And they each kind of needed something slightly different. And then, and because they, you know, especially the, 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 uh, the resistance, the black, you know, what they call the Black River Irregulars, they, they were a bit, little bit needy as well, so you, I guess maybe that's why you had a bit more sympathy with them. But they each had their skills, they each had, they had their human side as well. I think that's what draws you to them. I would thoroughly, thoroughly recommend this book. Um, I'm very surprised, I didn't know if I would like this because it seemed it would be lending itself more to sci-fi. Not that I don't like sci-fi, I absolutely adore sci-fi, but I was, when I was reading this I was thinking, how does this tag in to The Bottled Inn? Because this is primarily a fantasy show. But there's enough fantasy in there for it to lend itself into the fantasy genre. So if you don't really like sci-fi, but you like fantasy, you will still like this, because as I say, it's more about the characters, it's more about the interaction of the characters, and there seems to be a wider storyline going on that, that has an epic fantasy feel like Lord of the Rings. Definitely, definitely recommend this book. <laughs> the Black River Irregulars, book one, Black Dogs by Richard Lee Byers. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> That's all I have to say with that. There was one thing I forgot to mention in the actual main body of the review. that It confused me a little bit at the beginning. Black Dogs is one gang, and then the Black River Irregulars is another gang. Both have black in the title, and that kind of confused me. It's almost like calling one character Stuart Lee and one character Stuart Smith. Yes, they're different people, but they share the same name. So that kind of threw me a little bit because I was thinking, are they in the Black Dogs or are they in the Black River Irregulars? But that was a very minor point because once I got into it, it kind of quickly faded away. Recommend this. I'll be intrigued to watch, not to watch, to play the game that this is based on. But maybe that's for another time. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already. And remember to keep it unreal, especially if you live in the Undercity. <laughs> <laughs>